How's it going, everybody? Happy Friday and welcome to the Hot Corner Live Strategy Session. I'm your host, Steve Straza. I'm the Director of Research here at All Star Charts. We do this every week. Typically on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock, we did have to reschedule a couple things this week. We had some moving parts. Uh, so we're doing it Friday. We'll be back uh, on a regularly scheduled time next week, Wednesdays at 1. What do we do here? We do a little bit of global macro. We talk about you know any important developments uh, that have taken place over the past week. And then we dive in and talk about you know the stocks that we like uh, that have experienced insider buying um, in, in you know over the trailing six to twelve months, right? So let's dive right in. A lot to talk about this week. Uh, before we do nothing, we discuss here constitutes any solicitation to buy or sell any security. This is solely for informational purposes and not to be construed as investment advice. For more on our disclaimer, you can go to allstarcharts.com backslash terms. This is it. How can we not start here? NVIDIA up about 25% yesterday. I think they might have broken the record for uh, the most market cap gained in a single session. Came in around $200 billion. I think it was more like 185 uh, we had some reports from Apple and Amazon back in 20 or 21 uh, that did come close. Regardless, uh, if it was the record or not, it was a big move and we continue to see this, right? We continue to see stocks with very small market caps, uh, maybe trend lower. I'm talking about you regional banks. Um, and then we see stocks with, you know, these monster market caps continue to trend very well, beat earnings, break out to new highs. In the case of NVIDIA, these are new all-time highs, so that makes NVIDIA the first of any big cap tech stock in the U.S. or abroad, mind you, uh, to make it back to new all-time highs. So here's your market leader. This is the leader of all leaders right now. This is the strongest stock in the S&P 500, stronger than Meta uh, on a year-to-date basis or going back to the October lows. This is it. This is this is all the craze right now. Why? Well, let's talk about why. NVIDIA is perfectly positioned to be the market leader, the purest of pure plays for the AI revolution that is already upon us and happening all around us every day. Again, NVIDIA sells the chips, the GPUs, that anybody who wants to get into the artificial intelligence space, create an artificial intelligence platform or any sort of product or service around AI, they're going to NVIDIA and buying their chips. And there's not even really a good substitute. That's been the case for NVIDIA's products for a while now. Second place is, is very far away from what I hear. And that second place would be something like AMD uh, for what it's worth. But these guys basically are at the forefront of the biggest mega trend, uh, I think, of any of our careers. You know, people in the know would tell you that this artificial intelligence stuff is bigger than the Internet itself. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. But if it's even close uh, to being as big as the Internet, that's a big deal. And it's a trend that you want to get behind because it's a trend that's going to persist for a long time. So here's NVIDIA gapping higher. It's probably no coincidence that this earnings power earnings gap uh, took place right at the former highs here, right? What was so good about this report? Sure, there was a nice EPS beat, a nice sales beat, but this is really it. They raised their next quarter revenue guidance from seven billion to eleven billion. That's rather material, I would say, right? Uh, so fifty-five, sixty percent increase in forward guidance despite rallying 25 30 percent yesterday and today the stock is actually cheaper today than it was just before earnings why because on any if you're using any forward revenue or earnings um metrics in your valuation multiples whether it's price to earnings or price to sales they rose so the denominator of those uh equations rose more than the numerator which is price right so analysts and the company itself are going out and revising their forward earnings and revenue numbers. And there were bigger gains there than there was 
in the price reaction to earnings itself. So if you think, oh my gosh, I don't wanna chase this here, it's technically cheaper than it was before earnings. Uh, I think dips will be bought aggressively, not just in NVIDIA, but we're seeing uh, probably the biggest sympathy bid that I've ever seen the past few days where like NVIDIA literally dragged the entire NASDAQ 100 higher with it yesterday. And now again today, you know, yesterday, the disparity between, you know, the best stocks and the worst stocks was massive, right? It was really just the NASDAQ and tech ripping higher while the rest of the market remained under pressure. Uh, I think something does have to give there. Uh, either the worst stocks are going to have to play catch up, or I do think the best stocks have some backing and filling and some corrective action, maybe some deeper corrective action than many of us are prepared for. Um, not really the bet we're making. We're looking more for value and cyclicals in the weakest groups to play catch up here. All right, so let's talk about what happened. NASDAQ looked pretty vulnerable Wednesday, Wednesday morning, right? Uh, was pulling back, retesting these August highs. Looked like it was going to fall back into this box and undo this nice little base breakout uh, that we had, I think, late last week. Instead, textbook retests, and we're carrying on higher. If I look at the NASDAQ right now, what do we got here? The Q's are up three and a half percent on the week. Looks good. Looks great. Today, what a candle today. Up another two and a half percent today, uh, following through on almost two and a half percent yesterday. Right. So big, big recovery uh, for the NASDAQ, for growth, for tech. Momentum hitting a new high. I'm just looking at the chart here now. Momentum, you're going to see surge higher. This chart's a little bit stale. Basically, what is this telling us? This breakout is the real deal. Right. We got the successful retest. Now we're making new highs yet again, taking out the pivot highs from just last week. Um, this is a valid reversal pattern. We have gone from downtrend, which you see on the left hand side of the screen, to sideways trend here to now a new uptrend. Right. As long as this base uh, is intact, a new uptrend is underway. The path of least resistance is higher. Um, we're looking for stocks to buy. How do we know? Like, what are some things that we look to for confirmation of these new highs in the NASDAQ? One of the biggest things for me is, you know, when it when there's a strong and sustained bull market taking place in any asset, that asset tends to outperform its peers or its alternatives, right? So that's why I'm showing the growth versus value ratio up top here in blue, because the NASDAQ 100 is very much a growth index. So I want to know, are growth stocks outperforming? Are they leading on a relative basis, right? Do we have that leadership to confirm these new highs on absolute terms? We very much do. In fact, the uh, relative trend led the absolute trend higher just a few weeks ago. Uh, and really, we can go across the board and look at relative trends and, you know, just make a long list um, of ratios that are confirming. So here's the NASDAQ versus the Russell 2000. You're seeing new all-time highs in this ratio, back above those uh, dot-com bubble highs from 2000s, early 2000s. So uh, that's confirmation right there. <clears throat> And then really, you know, when we talk about this AI revolution or this AI mega trend, what is it? It's really the same exact playbook that's worked for over 10 years now. It's just big cap tech. It's more outperformance from big cap tech. So if you're a believer in this and think it has legs, expect this ratio to keep working up and to the right. Uh, so this is XLK SPY. Let's zoom in a little bit. More confirmation for the new highs in XLK or the NASDAQ, right? Uh, this breakout in the relative trend. You got a beautiful base here, not too different from the bases that we're seeing resolve higher uh, in the absolute trends, right? So just another piece of confirmation. Obviously, we have to talk about semiconductors. Also getting the confirmation there in the relative trend. Listen, semiconductors and technology, this is, if you look at the last two weeks in semiconductors, is the best back-to-back -back, uh, weekly performance that semiconductors have had on absolute terms since the dot-com bubble. This is the best, you know, yesterday was the best day uh, that semiconductors had on a relative basis since the dot-com bubble. It's the best day that large cap technology had on a relative basis since the dot-com bubble. And hey, look, we just happen to be taking out those dot-com bubble highs uh, in a lot of these ratios, right? Whether it's NASDAQ Russell, or something like this, like semiconductors S&P, these relative trends are very much suggesting um, that this outperformance or leadership from big cap tech is here to stay. And we should be positioning ourselves for more leadership over longer time frames. right? A massive base breakout like this, you're gonna get a reaction higher if this stays.
Another way that, you know, we look for confirmation is just peer indexes, right? So if I see tech breaking out, um, booking a reversal pattern, making new highs, or the NASDAQ doing that, then I'm going to say, okay, how about the subsector ind indexes or the industry group ETFs in tech and growth? Are they confirming what we're seeing? Here's one of them. Here's the most important one, right? This is the VanX Semiconductor ETF. Look at those two weekly candles. Not bad. This base has been completed with authority, right? This is what we call a decisive upside resolution. Here's tech and communications. Here's what I'm talking about. Perfect retest and communications. You know, tech didn't even pull back in, uh, deep enough to retest those August highs. Uh, ripping higher again today. These trend reversals are very valid, right? We're getting a reaction higher now. You're getting that reaction leg right now. Not already in. Find whatever one is closest to this base breakout level and get in uh, and start banking on that reaction move. Software, got new 52-week highs today. This is today's candle. You want to see software participate. And here's the other thing, too. Like, let's talk about this. I was talking about this on Twitter Spaces yesterday. We have this massive secular tailwind, right? That guy's like Steve Cohen or Elon Musk uh, or all these tech executives. You know, we, we heard the NVIDIA call the other night. That was really something. Are all really excited about telling you this is the next big thing. You know, it's going to drive productivity and efficiency gains for the economy, particularly the U.S. economy, because we have all that big cap tech here, right? It's going to be really big for the broader market. As this is happening, as this new mega trend is hitting, we're coming off the worst bear market for these groups, software, semiconductors, technology, the worst bear market they've had in 20 years. You got to go back to the dot-com bubble to see the types of drawdowns that we saw in 2021 and 2022. There are stocks down 60, 70, 80% that analysts are now writing notes about this week saying they're at the forefront of this new AI revolution. They've just been discounted, you know, and lost three quarters of their value over the past few years. So they're not coming off, you know, historically high valuations. In fact, it's quite the opposite. They've been discounted in a big way. And a lot of them are, you know, trading at below market multiples. What I mean by that is that a lot of these tech stocks are still cheaper than the average S&P 500 stock. A lot of these tech stocks are still cheaper than consumer staple stocks. Go look for yourself if you don't believe me. So while this is happening and we're seeing, you know, this huge bid into growth and tech and all these offensive groups, what's happening to the defensive groups? We're seeing a massive unwind in the past few weeks. Uh, staples had been outperforming. You can see it right here. Staples had been steadily outperforming the broader market for three straight months, starting in February. That ended this month, earlier in May. And just look at how aggressive of an unwind we've seen in this ratio. I'm usually looking at this upside down. This is SPY XLP. I'm typically looking at XLP SPY. Um, but really, SPY is offense, XLP is defense, right? You have the broader market, then you have your defensive stocks, um, <clears throat> XLP in the denominator. New 52-week highs in uh, the S&P 500 versus Staples. That is very risk-on. Uh, it tells you that the animal spirits are alive and well. And when you look at these absolute trends, what's gone on the past few weeks is as money has poured into semiconductors and poured into tech stocks, it's come out of things like Staples and utilities very aggressively. right? So people are simply repositioning from safe stocks, safe havens, stocks that they want to own if they're unsure about the market environment, if they're they're not believing that a true new bull market is upon us. They're hanging out in staples and utilities. They're dumping those the past few weeks and jumping in to some of the riskiest stocks or most offensive stocks in the market. Tech, semiconductors, software, internet, right? Uh, so that sort of bullish repositioning, to me, uh, is, is a huge development and it very much supports this new bull market thesis. Thought that would be a nice way to kind of bring it all uh, back together there. So very much risk on. Semiconductors continue to work. AI megatrend is here and very real. Uh, we are already seeing it in earnings reports, in numbers. We had Marvell Technologies report today up like 20-something, 30%. It's up more than NVIDIA this week. So it's not just NVIDIA. It's the whole space, 
whole space is being dragged higher. So if you want to get into NVIDIA, how do we do it? You have those 2021 highs here that come in right around 335. Listen, uh, the best trends are the hardest to get into. And I think you're going to see that here with NVIDIA. I would be really surprised if this gap gets filled. Uh, if it does, got to be a buyer back towards 335. But listen, I think the ideal scenario here is just looking at today's price action really tight, up another you know 2% on the day. I would love to see just a high and tight bull flag print here for the next few weeks, right? And then we can be buyers of the bull flag resolution with this target here at 475. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this one. Hopefully come back to you guys next week or the following week um, with a better, a better entry strategy. Right now, you know, if you do get some sort of, you know, big weakness or big broader market sell-off that sends this thing back to these former highs, you got to be buyer all day, 335. If not, like I said, we'll look for some flag action here or some short-term continuation uh, pattern and, and, and figure out a way to get in. But why do we want to get in? We love leaders. There is no bigger leader. These charts are zoomed out over 20 years. It's showing NVIDIA versus just about any benchmark, whether it's S&P, NASDAQ, tech, semiconductors, new all-time highs. This thing outperforms everything. And these are the strongest benchmarks that you could benchmark to. Not easy to outperform tech or semis or the NASDAQ. Not easy. Those have been the leaders, right? Uh, so NVIDIA is the leader among leaders. One thing that we do internally uh, that I just wanted to share with you guys because I think it's a great exercise and it's also a very easy exercise and anybody can do it from home. We were sitting around saying to ourselves, what is NVIDIA going to do uh, following this earnings report? You know, do we is this going to be a massive fail? We got right back to those all-time highs. Do we fail here and, and this is a fade? Or do we get some sort of, you know, huge breakout on some crazy numbers? You know, little do we know then. We we're talking about this on Tuesday. What do we do? We look to the other leaders in the space. If you want to know what one leader might do, ask yourself, okay, NVIDIA is one of the strongest stocks in the market, one of the strongest semiconductor stocks. Are there any other, you know, really strong semis? And there were. We found Avago and we overlaid the two charts and we found, wow, it looks strikingly similar, almost identical, right? And we said, what is what is Avago doing? Or I'm sorry, Broadcom. It used to be Broadcom Avago. They kept the Avago ticker AVGL. What is Broadcom doing? Just ripped to new all-time highs, blasted right through uh, those former highs. And we looked at that and said, okay, this is our roadmap for NVIDIA. Other leaders are resolving higher, breaking out to new all-time highs on the heels of earnings. Maybe NVIDIA does that too. And lo and behold, a day later, you know, here's what that chart looks like, okay? Getting that confirmation. So oftentimes there'll be great leading uh, information in just what a company's peers have done, right? And if you're wondering what one leader is going to do, go look at the other leaders. Go look at the other strongest stocks uh, in that sector or industry group. And I think Broadcom really gave us some, some great information this week. All right, what can we buy here? So today we're keeping it to big cap tech. I was just talking to Alfonso. I said, let's find all the best tech names uh, in our inside scoop list. And that's what I want to talk about today. So that's the theme. Um, and we got some good ones. So let's talk about it. Things that we look for to know, you know, this is a good base. This is a base we want to get behind. Let's talk about them. 200-day moving average, curling or flattening out and curling higher. Check. A decisive upside resolution above the August highs. Got a gap here in AMD. Check, right? That's as decisive as it gets. Follow-up gap. Uh, and that was in sympathy to NVIDIA's earnings, that gap. Overbought momentum readings and no oversold momentum readings. You can see that here. We're not below 30, not all year, not since the lows of last year, but we're above uh, 70 consistently now, three times this year. Highest momentum reading since 2021 today. Okay, so check. The other thing would be the relative trend. And we didn't bring along the relative trend in AMD, but if you just you know, go into your charting platform, type in AMD SPY, you're going to see a chart that looks strikingly uh, similar to this one. Very, you know, the same reversal pattern, resolving higher, uh, AMD hitting its highest level since early 2022, yeah, uh, against the broader market. So this one checks all the boxes. AMD, I don't think <laughs> you're going to get to buy this one on weakness. Maybe you do, uh, but we're already above target one today. This doesn't have today's price action. We're up another 4% today. These things will not stop. Uh, 122.50, that's our level. We think, you know, that's a nice entry. Get in on some sort of uh, stabilization here at 122.50. Maybe we've got some backing and filling early next week. 
uh, price target 165. And AMD, like I said, from what I hear, and I'm no expert in this and I don't, I don't want to be, um, they are best positioned to try to compete with NVIDIA when it comes to these AI chips. Um, we'll see how true that is. I know that at least for like the graphics processors, they are probably the second best, but it's still, there's a big gap between first and second place there. Uh, I don't know if that's the same thing for these AI chips. I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about it uh, in the coming months and quarters. Marvell technology. Wow. MRVL. You got the base here. 200 day trying to curl higher. Uh, probably going to take a little bit more time, but it's heading in that direction. Momentum is ridiculously overbought here. Uh, and this one actually outperforming NVIDIA this week. Up 29% today. Trading on the highs of day. I mean, this thing looks so good. Uh, so this was the breakout level around 48. Let's let this thing kind of calm down. But we do have some levels when we really zoom out nicely here. And here's your beat. Your EPS is 31 cents uh, versus estimates 29. Revenue is just a you know tinge above. These companies aren't moving higher on their results from last quarter. They're moving higher on what they're saying about their results for next quarter and the following quarter, right? It's the guidance. Um, and anybody who has any sort of significant exposure to this AI theme that's taking the world by storm is going to get bid up. And then we'll find out next quarter if that's really real or not, right? They have to deliver. Somebody like NVIDIA, I, you know, I have faith in their leadership. They have one of the best CEOs in, in the history of technology in Jensen Wong. Um, and if anything, I think Jensen probably, he knows how to play the game. I don't think he wanted to, you know, over promise anything. I think if anything, this guy's probably lowballing on that 11 billion in revenue next quarter. Maybe they come in at 11 and a half, 12, right? Um, but we'll see. Marvell's gonna have to deliver next quarter, just like Nvidia. Here's the line in the sand, 57. Like I said, let's let this thing cool off. Uh, try to enter as closely to 57 as we can. And we play it back to those all-time highs of 89. But look, this is that big dot-com bubble base breakout pattern. And what a perfect retest, right? Got the dot-com bubble base, textbook retest. Now back above, you know, uh, this 161.8, we can define our risk right there and play it back to all-time highs. Then 141 in the future. That's where this thing's going, I think. Because you have this structural base breakout, which is telling you the trend is higher for ultra long-term timeframes, right? This That's what this base breakout suggests. You got the initial leg, then you got a, a hard throwback and a retest. Now it's go time. Right, you would expect this to ex this reaction leg to extend beyond uh, the all time highs achieved just a few years ago. Service now, um, Nvidia talked about this one a lot in their earnings call. They have some sort of partnership. So Service now, it is a software stock, but it is involved in the AI space at least in a peripheral way. Um, so they caught a sympathy bid five twenty. I think this base is really well defined here at these August highs. So if we're above five twenty, we like Service now long uh, towards seven oh seven. I love this one. Uh, it's a software stock. I don't know what they do. It's a small cap, so it's not for everybody. Be careful. Make sure it has ample liquidity, you know, position size accordingly. Like I said, it's under a billion. Typically, we won't talk about stocks under a billion, but I couldn't help myself. It's called Couch Base. And it, look at the base. I mean, look at this base. You got the August highs right here at 19. You know, uh, Q2 highs from last year as well. You got that 200-day flattening out, curling higher. Momentum just... Ping and overbought after overbought reading. I love this base. 19, long towards 26. Uh, we have an institution involved in this name. Got in December, uh, over 5% stake. That's EVR Research LP. So Couch Base Inc. Ticker symbol base. Just love it. Dynatrace. Uh, they do software things. CEO, Form 4 filer um, last year. Got the base breakout. This is another one we really like. So call it. 48 and change, 49 pivot highs from earlier this year. We're above there. Uh, first target, 60. Second target, 80. And again, these are just the best looking tech stocks that have experienced insider activity over the trailing year and change. Google. You know, hearing a lot about how Google's the one being disrupted by AI, right? Everyone who is used to saying, oh, I Google things is now chat GPT things, right? So that's why you didn't get the big, you know, uh, gains from Google last month and the month before. It kind of didn't start until just this month because 
people were looking at this name saying these are the guys who are not benefiting from it. Now they're coming out with Bard and they're really going to try to compete hard and they do have the resources and the money um, to put in a very good effort at, you know, getting back to the top or getting back to the front of this trend. Um, but it is going to take some work. I think the market's going to give them the benefit of the doubt because they are Google and they have some of, you know, the brightest engineers and technology people in the world working there. So, you know, we'll see 125 first target already hit. I would feed the ducks here a little bit. If you've been in Google, it was a great trade for us. I was in it. Uh, I did take profits. I think last week when we first got to 125. So look, let's see it stabilize here. We're, we're kind of consolidating in a, in a tight little um, short-term continuation pattern here. So I think you could buy on strength back above this, you know, 125 zone, call it even 126, the upper bound, you know, these pivot highs from just earlier this week and last week, target 151. NVIDIA is back at all-time highs. We're going to see more and more of the, you know, best technology stock go back, best technology stocks make it back to all-time highs. I think Google's, you know, going to be very much in that conversation. And that's probably where it's heading. But do be aware of the dynamic here that, you know, while they are a part of the AI trend, they're also being disrupted by it, right? And that's why they are far cheaper than, than most tech stocks on any sort of valuation basis. Meta was cheap getting expensive again uh that's what what a, a triple off the october lows will do for you right so this stock's gone from like yeah just about tripled wow so 248 we got we got a gap zone here uh i'll trade this gap all day so on strength above 248 target 295 and meta that gap probably fills pretty quickly too i mean this stock just can't stop won't stop 259 today so already leaving the station on us listen it's not the greatest risk reward um, so I, I do think, you know, next stop 380, those all time highs from late 2021. Uh, but let's fill this gap first and get, get to about 295. So meta, we continue to like, uh, alongside NVIDIA, this is, you know, second best stock, uh, in the market since late last year. Now Corsair gaming, you won't find a base much cleaner than this one. Uh, like DraftKings a lot also. Very clean base, but Corsair, you know, you got the base breakout on a really, you know, strong candle here a few weeks back, and now we're just kind of chopping, coiling uh, above the breakout level. I love that. How do we play these patterns? You draw a long, you draw a line at the pivot highs here that come in right about twenty bucks, and you buy um, this short-term continuation pattern breakout. So that will happen uh, around about twenty. You can also buy weakness back towards this eighteen fifty base breakout level. I prefer to buy in strength. There, you got the bullish momentum machine. Target 24, and um, we have an institution in this one, a big hedge fund, Eagle Tree Capital. <clears throat> Vontier Corp, VNT, uh, another nice base, you know, getting a little bit of corrective action. Closer you can get it to 28, the better. It looks like we're surging back to new highs again today. Yeah, this one's going to make a new closing high again here today. Uh, so, yeah, the closer you can get it to 28, the better. But listen, the risk reward is still great if you buy it right here at today's prices. Uh, with the target back at those former highs. Uh, and those will be the all-time highs because this company just came public in late 2020. So target back at 37. I love to see the CFO as the form four filer here. Always love that. And DraftKings, you guys know if you listen to me enough, you know how I feel about DraftKings. I am long, you know, I bought some, I bought some short dated calls. Uh, I think they only go out. They're the June monthlies. So whenever that uh, June monthly expiration is. And I bought them... Um, Last week, got a really nice reaction higher. And, you know, typically I would sell uh, one or two or enough to get my money back. I think I only bought about six calls or even four calls. Typically, I would just take my money off the table, get my cost bases back. And I could have done that earlier this week on the move, but I was busy and I missed it. And you now if you're going to manage short term positions like that, you got to stay on top of them. And it's a problem that I still have. Uh, as a trader and an analyst because I'm busy and sometimes I miss things and I should have exited and now I'm kicking myself because we are back in and filling a little bit. Uh, I'll bet you we get another, you know, leg higher in the coming weeks and I'm sure I'll be okay on that position. Maybe I'll be happy that I didn't get out of, you know, uh, didn't close down one or two calls. Um, but we'll see, you know, that's how it works. If you're going to trade these short dated things. You really, you know, uh, portfolio maintenance, you got to pay attention. So uh, 21 is the breakout level here in DraftKings trading about 2350 today. First target, 34.50. And then we're going back to those highs, uh, 74.50. And yeah, that would be the all-time highs, 2021. So I like DraftKings a lot. Look at this bullish momentum regime. That's what we want to see, right? That's what I'm talking about. If I threw a 200-day on here, you'd see it curling higher under price. 
Uh, we're back above those August highs. You know, momentum looks great. A lot to like here. DraftKings long above 21. Uh, let me try and check the chat really quick, guys. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Uh, shoot them over to info at allstarcharts.com. Running a global workforce. Sorry. So let's check out. I do have some stuff in the chat. Zozo Trader, is that is that my guy? Mike, is that you, Zozo? For real? Um, any thoughts on chat ETF? Do we have a chat GPT ETF already? Zozo, Zozo and I are old friends, so I'd love to see him in the chat. That's awesome. Uh, one of the one of the best traders you'll find. Uh, so I don't see chat as an ETF. Am I missing something? Is that a new is that a new thing? Are you are you uh, busting my balls here? What are, you, what are you talking about? Nasdaq Poppy. Are the big moves mainly in tech, or are you seeing any sector rotation happen? Listen, we started off this bull run last year with some with some really nice participation. Um, allow me to remind everybody: the Dow started this new bull market. Late last year, we were all talking about, wow, the Dow rallied 20%. Look at that. That's incredible, right? So cyclicals, value, blue chips kicked off this thing. Then they passed the baton over to tech and growth, which has really kept it running uh, on a year-to-date basis. And when I look at these short-term trends in materials, energy, financials, even industrials, it's not great. It's really not great. So we haven't seen that next leg of rotation really take hold yet. Growth in tech continues to trend very well, looks excellent, uh, but value's got to get it together. And I don't want to make the bet that value doesn't get it together because the bullish developments we're seeing from other groups and from the leaders are just so bullish. Um, I'm in the camp that they're going to drag the rest of the marker, market up with them. You know, So I'll look at some of these short-term tops, whether it's in metals and mining, some of the energy ETFs, other materials subgroups like Moo, agribusiness, making new lows. Um, this week, I'm looking at those and saying, I think those tops are going to fail or the ones that have completed don't follow through. And we, you know, get some sort of, you know, whipsaw move higher, maybe some sort of bear trappy uh, type formation in those groups. I am still making the bet that the laggards, uh, that the sectors that have not been participating do play catch up. But we need to see it and we need to see it soon, really fast. So that'll be the topic uh, for next week, for next Wednesday. Uh, if you want to come watch the show, I'll focus on cyclicals and I'll focus on the weaker groups and talk about what we need to see there because uh, it is really important. Uh, do you think we are at the start of a bull run? I th I think it started last year, man. Uh, does that mean everything is going to just be ripping from here? Uh, in some of the best bull runs, you do see that. Um, we'll see, right? Regardless if everything's ripping, you always want to be in the leaders anyway. Uh, will there be will the will there be healthy pullbacks for us to get better entries? Yeah, you're always going to get pullbacks. You'll always get corrective action, uh, particularly in the indexes. Right, markets don't move in a straight line higher. You will get some backing and filling, and those will give you opportunities. But like I said, the best individual stocks, you know, the 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 best trends on a individual issue basis, are often very difficult to get into because they don't correct through price. They correct through time. You know, they go up and then sideways and up and sideways. And you, you know, if you're investing on valuation or fundamentals, a lot of people never get that price, right? And that's why I look at some of these, you know, big gap moves higher in these semiconductor names, you know, AMD is a good example. And I say, maybe you don't get a retest of that base breakout level, but let's look for a short-term continuation pattern here. And we will buy the bull flags or both bull, bull pennant breakouts and do our best to get into the best stocks. Uh, Cause we are aware um, of that little, you know, idiosyncrasy to markets and what i mean by that is that the best stocks you know don't give you the best chances to get in uh across the SP and nasdaq and growth mega caps like apple meta microsoft and google not sure what you mean there hi steve yes hi uh any thoughts on ticker ai listen it's not it's not for me uh, I don't understand the company very well. I know that they've had revenue recognition problems. I don't love that. I think you have to be careful, right? This reminds me of like 2017 when, you know, Long Island iced tea companies were renaming themselves Long Island blockchain. Everybody's going to want to be an AI company. You know, I've read the sell side reports. Apparently they are a legitimate AI company, but you want to be careful with these small stocks. I think NVIDIA is, is such a perfect pure play for the space. And you have these other mega cap techs, which are diversified enough in their businesses that like 
you know, AI will be a nice kicker and probably drive the gains if they get it right. But then they also have these core businesses that they could fall back on if those bets don't work. I really, you know, listen, guys, I'm looking for smaller cap AI plays and I'll bring them to you as I find them. I don't think there's really any good ones out there right now. No, uh, to answer your question, I really don't like C3.ai. You know, I, I don't like that they're having revenue recognition problems this early on. So I really think NVIDIA is the easiest answer to that question, especially after this earnings report. I like it far more today than I did two days ago before the earnings report. They just put the entire market on notice that they own this space right now. So what does that mean? It means that all these institutions and RIAs who have clients who are asking them, hey, am I invested in AI? How can I get invested in AI? I need exposure to AI. You know what they're going to do for their clients? They're going to stuff them into NVIDIA stock because it's a safe stock. It's a mega cap stock. It's a market leader. Just makes a lot of sense, right? So there's going to be a relentless bid and pullbacks and dips are going to be bought aggressively in NVIDIA. I think for that reason, they're going to continue to see uh, just incredible fund flows. Uh, Yoko, uh, I got to laugh about Kimmy talking about Cisco today especially after your discussion yesterday. Yeah, listen, um, I don't love it. I don't know what happened, but I don't love it. Unfortunately for me, I'm so busy in the morning. I don't get to hang out in Kimmy's trading room like the rest of you guys. I, I wish I could, but I don't. Uh, I miss all that. I got I to stop in. I used to stop in uh, and make, make guest appearances, but now with the morning show, it's been hard for us. Uh, with interest rates staying high and the 10-year rates heading higher, there could be opportunity in value stocks. But yeah, so let's talk about that. That's a good way to end. That's the last question I'm taking. If I missed any of them, uh, guys, send me an email. Interest rates. Let's talk about that. Typically, lower interest rates are better for tech and growth stocks. Interest rates have been cruising for the past two weeks, really roaring higher. One of the best streaks we've had this entire cycle when it comes to the consecutive updates for rates. I think we had seven straight updates earlier this week. Meanwhile, tech, tech and growth stocks, which traditionally would be under pressure in a rising rate environment, are, are just gunning to the upside. So, how do we look at something like that? We would say, okay, if tech stocks, which are not supposed to do great when rates are rallying, are still doing great while rates are rallying, what happens in an environment where rates cool off or roll over or correct a little bit? What are tech stocks going to look like then, right? And then you have to take that and be fair and, and apply the same logic to value stocks, right? Value stocks, whether it's materials or energy, Let's throw out financials because they're a weird one right now. I don't. I think higher interest rates are actually not good for financials right now. They're going to break their balance sheets more. But when we talk about like cyclicals and value outside of financials, higher interest rates are typically a better thing, right? Higher interest rates, higher commodity prices, higher inflation. You tend to see a bid in things like materials and energy, but they haven't been moving higher despite higher rates for the last two weeks. So we have to look at those groups and say, boy, if they can't even trend higher while rates are rallying, what are those groups going to look like if rates roll over? And that would be a bearish implication. While for the tech stocks, it would be a bullish implication. I don't want to overthink the intermarket right here. I think there is a lot of push and pull uh, and the market's very much disagreeing with what the Fed is doing. And, and they're still trying to kind of figure that out. Uh, if anything, I think tech stocks and growth stocks are kind of making a call and telling us that they disagree with the bond market and that they're expecting lower interest rates. So we'll see. Uh, a lot of talk about a pause or maybe one more hike and then a pause and then some cuts. Uh, Fed funds futures are still figuring it out. They've been all over the place. I think we'll know more in a few weeks. Uh, so that's all I got, guys. Thank you, as always, for joining me. We went 45 minutes. This is always so much fun. You know, I've been doing so many group videos for the past week. This is this has been very refreshing. Uh, I do enjoy my my solo videos. And thank you all for joining me, as always. We'll be back here. Not same place, same time next week. But Wednesdays, 1 o'clock, back on our regular schedule. Have a great weekend, everybody.